Welcome back to the channel. Today we look at the life and philosophy of Alan Watts, best known for his role in bringing Zen philosophy to the West and exploring the mind-expanding realm of psychedelics. His 26 books and popular radio and TV broadcasts introduced Americans in the 1950s and 1960s to a Zen that was authentic, yet contemporary and accessible. When you die, you go to another life. Maybe heaven, maybe purgatory, maybe hell. These are the kind of questions that make us puzzle profoundly about our existence. Death is not the end of consciousness. The human being has himself the feeling of belonging right in nature. Man not dominating nature, but fitting into it and feeling perfectly at home. Through meditation, we come to that kind of profound peace which is exhibited in the faces of the Buddhas. Aldous Huxley described him as a curious man, half monk and half racecourse operator. He hung out with countercultural icons like Ken Kesey and Jack Kerouac. His interpretations of Zen Buddhism were unique. Watts rejected the conventional ideas of reincarnation and the popular understanding of karma as a system of rewards and punishments carried out lifetime after lifetime. He viewed Buddhism as more of a philosophy and psychotherapy than a religion. For Watts, Buddhism is a way to maintain a healthy personality in a culture that tends to tie people up in unconscious logical binds. For example, you are told to be free and that you should follow the rules. It's these double binds, according to Zen writings, that produce inner tension, frustration, and neuroses. Watts saw Zen as a way to see through conventional thinking to a place where your mind could be at peace inside a culture that was designed to create anxiety and frustration. A person who thinks all the time has nothing to think about except thoughts. And so he loses touch with reality and lives in a world of illusion. By thoughts, I mean specifically the chattering inside the skull, perpetual and compulsive repetition of words, of calculations and symbols going on inside the head. For what is reality? Obviously, no one can say reality isn't material, that's just an idea. Reality isn't spiritual, that's just an idea. Reality is... Alan Watts was born in England in 1915. He was interested in literature and philosophy from an early age, often drawn to the mystical and the metaphysical. As a kid, he had a fascination with Eastern culture and religion. His interest led him to read books about Buddhism and Taoism that his mother gave him. At the tender age of 16, Watts was appointed the secretary of the London Buddhist Lodge. At 19, he wrote his first book, The Spirit of Zen. Around this time, he met Eleanor, a charming young American girl, and the daughter of Ruth Fuller, who was a trailblazer for Zen Buddhism in America. He would go on to marry Eleanor, and the young couple moved to New York together, embarking on their new life as partners in love and exploration. They were blessed with two daughters. Watts pursued a degree in theology at Seabury Western Theological Seminary in Illinois, and became an Episcopalian priest and chaplain at Northwestern University. He started integrating his growing knowledge of Eastern religions into his Christian teachings. However, his unorthodox views and outspoken nature clashed with the more conservative elements of the church, leading to his departure. He and Eleanor also faced personal conflicts, which eventually led to their divorce. Shortly after that, he married Dorothy DeWitt and retained custody of his daughters. Watts and his new wife moved to California, and he took up a teaching position at the American Academy of Asian Studies in San Francisco. He immersed himself in the academic study of Asian philosophies while also teaching and lecturing on the subjects he was most passionate about. The meditation 
best to sit on the floor or the ground on a cushion, either cross-legged or in the lotus posture if you could manage it, or as I'm sitting, which is kneeling and sitting back on my heels, which I find the most convenient. This position is slightly uncomfortable. There is a certain amount of strain on the legs, but the advantage of this is that it keeps you awake. You should have your spine comfortably erect, not tight, not slumping, but just evenly erect, and your hands resting on your lap, palms upwards, one upon the other. And then you settle into the position, so that you, in the same way as we learned, to let the breath settle itself out when you breathe out. Watts began to author numerous books that would become seminal works in comparative religion and philosophy. In 1957, Watts published his most famous and successful book, The Way of Zen. His writings emphasized the importance of living in the present moment and understanding the interconnectedness of all life. He writes that we are all one and should celebrate this oneness to understand that all dualities, man and woman, yin and yang, even what we think of as good and evil, are opposite sides of a coin and require each other to exist. As the 1960s unfolded, a cultural revolution swept across America. The counterculture movement, characterized by its rejection of traditional values and exploration of new ways of thinking, found a kindred spirit in Alan Watts. He had left Dorothy, with whom he had had five children, and moved in with a woman named Mary Jane Yates, who went by Jano. Watts had begun to experiment with psychedelics. And I'm the sort of person who'll try anything once. And so I submitted to being dosed with 100 micrograms of lysergic acid diethyl amide under 25. While Alan Watts' exploration of Eastern philosophies intrigued many, his foray into the world of psychedelics sparked the most interest and controversy. What one tends to do with, under the influence of a psychedelic chemical is to become aware of being aware. That is to say, you turn your senses back on themselves. In seeing, you do not notice your eyes. In hearing, you do not notice your ears. If something alters your normal way of seeing things, your attention is diverted from what you see to seeing itself. Watts became a prominent figure in the counterculture movement, frequently speaking at events and collaborating with other influential thinkers such as Timothy Leary. Watts spoke of psychedelics as tools that could temporarily dissolve the ego, allowing individuals to experience a sense of unity with the cosmos. He believed these experiences could offer valuable perspectives on the interconnectedness of all life and the illusion of the separate self. He emphasized that psychedelics were not a shortcut to enlightenment, stressing the importance of intention in their use. He encouraged those interested in psychedelics to seek guidance from experienced practitioners. Despite his measured approach, Watts faced significant criticism from the public and the academic community. Many fear that promoting psychedelics would encourage reckless behavior, especially among the youth, and contribute to the broader social upheaval of the 1960s. In response to these criticisms, Watts defended his position by highlighting the profound potential of psychedelics to enhance human understanding. He acknowledged the risks, but argued that, with proper guidance and respect, the benefits could outweigh the dangers. He believed that dismissing these substances outright ignored their potential to reveal the intricate and often hidden dimensions of human experience. Watts' advocacy for psychedelics is a legacy that invites ongoing dialogue and introspection in our quest for deeper meaning. As far back as I can remember, into earliest childhood, I've always been absolutely fascinated with the idea of death. Now, most reasonable people just dismiss the thought. They say, you can't imagine that. They shrug their shoulders and say, well, that'll be that. But I suppose I'm one of those ornery people who aren't content with an answer like that. Not that I'm trying to find something else beyond that, 
but that I am just absolutely fascinated with what it would be like to go to sleep and never wake up. If you found this video informative, be sure to like and subscribe for more explorations into history, spirituality, and the mysteries that continue to captivate our curiosity. Until next time, keep exploring. And may your journey be filled with enlightenment and divine guidance.